led the birther movement. You sent investigators out to Hawaii to find out whether or not Obama, which you said, was not born here. Well, and it I, I turned out to well, not I, be true, well, so why should they you, believe you According to you, it's not true. I don't know. You he know, released his birth certificate. Yeah, you know, if, if you believe that, that's fine. I don't care. It's an old subject. I'm about jobs. I'm about security. I'm about fixing the military. I'm about taking care of our vets. I'm about things that you don't have to bring up old subjects. Whether he did or not, who knows? A lot of people don't agree with you on that, by the way. That's not definitive. Just to be clear, that was in this campaign. Our own Katie Turr asking that question at the start of this campaign. Joining me now, Jamil Smith, senior national correspondent for MBTV TV News, and former Trump campaign aide Sam Numberg, who was one of Trump's advisors when he first latched onto the birther movement, helped advise Trump on strategy. I should say you have parted ways with Trump as of this point. What was, what was the thinking that made this? He, he went from Donald Trump reality TV figure to possible Republican presidential candidate mm -hmm. based on this issue. Well, the idea was is that we needed somebody who could be this iconoclastic, larger-than-life figure, like the president, by the way, like Obama, who was going to take him on, hurt his favorability, and was also going to be the guy that said, if you gave us the nomination in the primary, as opposed to Mitt Romney or Newt Gingrich, I'm here to play and I'm here to win. So w was it to show that he could take down Obama? I mean, was that basically the, the thinking here? Uh, well, look, here's the thing. He, he had the president talk, you know, communicate with him. He had the president <laughs> flat out have to send advisors to Hawaii to get a copy of the birth certificate. <laughs> and he had, and the issue became Donald Trump against Barack Obama. Right. But, <laughs> to feel, but, but in some ways, that issue, right. I mean, when we look at the polling, I mean, that issue, that in some ways, it's sort of the unforgivable sin. I think not, not yeah. just for black voters, but for a lot of voters, but particularly, I think, for black voters, it is the unforgivable mm -hmm. sin. I think a lot of black voters were already hip to his housing discrimination and also the Central Park Five ad in 1989, but this only took the cake. I mean, you have the first black president being, you know, de delegitimized. Right. Effectively, by somebody who's not qualified to really make any kind of comment in, the, in that regard, and also, I mean, his recent you know denial of this is trying to skate around this. It, it, the effect of it is really to say, like, hey, these black voters who are upset by this, they're kind of crying wolf on this. They're really not actually offended. They're just wanting you know strike at me. Well, look, we certainly wanted to deflect from this and not talk about it this cycle, even in the primary. Why? There. Why? Well, did you realize that he looked ridiculous <laughs> when the president of the United States? was forced to show his papers and they showed exactly what he said we were worried that this would that if he could be categorized simply as a birther as opposed to Donald Trump the entrepreneur the outsider the icon you know the guy who's going to come take back Washington for the people which was what he ran on that populist measures in the primary it would be a loser so this was a strategic choice not to talk about it anymore right and he did that by the but, way wait but wait a second does he still believe it did he ever believe it I, you know, I do have a confidentiality agreement with him. He has said, he, <laughs> <laughs> he has, but he has oh said publicly, I, I will say this, I will say this. This was, this was certainly news to me that the campaign is now saying that he believes that the president was born <laughs> in America because we are, we were, we simply said that we weren't going to talk about the issue. So that was our answer. Let me just ask you, you seem like a perfectly nice dude. Yes. You're, you're, I'm not a birther. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. not a birther. The no. president. Okay. The president. Well, I'm glad. A. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> okay. But the president was born in Hawaii. Do you recognize? Yes. Good. Good. I'm okay. glad we're all on the same page. Yeah. Do you recognize how destructive this was? I mean, do you do you understand when Jamil talks about this sort of like do you get do you get why people found this unbelievably insulting and offensive and racist? Uh, racist. There were so. I, I do understand why people found found this insulting. I could see why some people could think it was racist, but I also think it was a strategically smart move for uh, for Trump to use. Initially, when he introduced himself into the cycle, do you we're think that's true? Wait, strategically but smart? we're talking about for the Republican primary. It set the stage for what's happening now. He got, you know, he said he signaled to the constituency that he has now that hey, I'm one of you. I'm going to articulate your message. So look, there are a lot of people out there who wanted to delegitimize the president, who wanted to make sure that not only they paint him as an outsider, but as a Muslim outsider, and so. Hey, here's a guy who's willing to do it. Now he's running for president. Oh, I'm going to vote for him. Do you think there's a connection between that? It's not an accident. Really. You're saying we wanted him to sort of win despite that. We wanted to put that in the past. Do you think that that was what paved the way for him to be Well, nominee? when you talk to voters on the trail, they are, you know, focused on this issue. It is a primary motivation for a lot of people to vote for Trump. Barack Obama, by the way, is, is I mean, he's Hillary Clinton's number one asset right now. I mean, yes. You know, you know, and he's yes, a, yes, he clearly is. But the point that Jamil made there is important. Donald Trump may have turned away from it, but I've had voters 
Mm -hmm. When I was covering the Republican primary, say, of course I don't think he was bombed in the U.S., or yes, I think he's a Muslim. There's polling on this. I mean, right. this, is, this, this belief out there. were, by the way, independents that thought this at well, that point, yes, too. Well, remember? Sure. There was yeah, a, they're no wiser powerful. than partisan, let's just be clear. <laughs> um, all right, Jamil Smith and Sam, <laughs> Sam Numberg, uh, uh, good to have you here. I Thank you very it. much.